Rocky, what are you doing? It was one of the gaming industry's worst kept secrets for a long time. But now, it's properly official. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming on October 26th for PC, PlayStation 4, PS5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S as a single-player, story-driven third-person action-adventure starring everyone's favourite dysfunctional cosmic family. During E3 2021, we got a pretty in-depth look at the game, including a decent chunk of gameplay. And you know what? It looks pretty fun. It's being developed by Eidos Montreal, the studio behind games like Deus Ex Human Revolution and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and it's being published by Square Enix. Now, the Lady Hellbender-owned elephant in the room, of course, is the fact that Square Enix also released Marvel's Avengers not that long ago. And despite a well-received single-player campaign starring Kamala Khan, it was criticised for its live elements and its slightly knockoff feel. However, everything about Guardians of the Galaxy and how it was announced says that Square Enix is ready to learn from that slight misstep. And Guardians might be all the better for it. Let's take a closer look. We're not seriously flying into that. You say the weather patterns of Seknarf 9 are tied to the temperament of its ruler. That's not how women work. Or weather. So, of course, Marvel's Avengers wasn't mentioned a single time during the Guardians of the Galaxy game reveal at E3. And yet, it definitely felt like the entire reveal was mostly geared towards showing how the two games were completely different. And how the publisher had learned from the response to Avengers' online loot grind and its delayed post-launch content. It also feels like an acknowledgement that Square now knows that single-player story-led content is what players want from these titles and so, that's what they're getting. With Eidos Montreal focusing on its strength as a studio with real talent for storytelling. Forged with the award-winning and influential Deus Ex series, which, FYI, predated Cyberpunk 2077 in offering choice-driven narrative in a futuristic setting. The developer has also taken care to mention several times since its unveiling that Guardians will not offer microtransactions or add-on DLC after launch. You better have one hell of a sales pitch. So we got fined. We appear to be 6,963 units short. I know, we clearly need a plan. So what about the story? Guardians of the Galaxy takes place several years after some kind of intergalactic war, when the Guardians are still a relatively fresh group, having been together for less than a year. They know each other fairly well and have good working dynamics, but they still bicker incessantly. The wider story arc seems to involve the Guardians accidentally creating something which takes on a life of its own and ends up threatening the galaxy unless they do something about it. But the gameplay we've seen so far involves them needing money for their ship and coming up with a half-baked plan to sell one of their own to the monster-obsessed Lady Hellbender to make a quick buck. So they travel to Seknarf 9 and enjoy a couple of run-ins with the local fauna. Everything about the gameplay shown off so far emphasizes that although the Guardians of the Galaxy is a solo gameplay experience, it's all centered around the team aspect of this family of misfits at its core, and how you, as their leader, keep them together. As their leader, Quill will be directing the team through combat situations, where you'll have to make quick decisions and issue commands while in the midst of a fight. So although you only directly control Quill, you do have to think about strategy and how you can use each character's unique skills at the right times to the best of their ability, staggering foes for extra damage. You pretty much direct their moves through quick select menus where time slows down so that you can think about your next course of action. And you can combine their abilities too, so even though fights can look like frenetic chaos, there are definitely tactical elements to think about. More no killing teammates! That's who! It's literally in your contract! I made no such commitments! What's perhaps even more interesting though is that you still have to act as a leader even outside of combat. Each guardian has a, shall we say, colorful and volatile personality, and they don't always mesh well together. 
So sometimes you'll be called upon during the game's quieter moments to broker an uneasy peace between your allies. It's a little like Mass Effect or even the Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale game, complete with a Rocket Will Remember That pop-up. Choices and consequences are things that the player will need to think about, and some of these will change your experiences in the game. Eidos Montreal has said, though, that the core story, how it begins and ends, will be the same for everyone. But the journey and the relationships between Guardians can change depending on the player, based off the choices they make in specific scenarios. According to the developers, the game is constantly tracking your decision-making. And your teammates will continue to reference specific choices you previously made throughout the game. And similar to other dialogue-driven games like Life is Strange, this includes deciding when or even if you decide to interact in conversations. You can just let a conversation play out without any input from Star-Lord at all, and that can produce a different result than if you choose to pipe up. It makes a lot of sense that Guardians of the Galaxy should work this way. Though it might have been nice to take control of Rocket, Gamora, Drax or Groot, Marvel's Avengers featured far too many playable characters and felt diluted as a result, especially as it essentially homogenized all of their abilities in an effort to keep its multiplayer offering fair and balanced. Star-Lord may not always have the most exciting skills of the team, but it's far more interesting to explore his relationship with his motley crew and spending time with them as they grow to trust and care about one another in this early part of their career. So, how long before someone else wants to pull this thing? We are 60 clicks from the fortress. I'd say closer to 75. Is anything on this planet not trying to kill us? Guys, huddle up! One thing Star-Lord definitely does have, however, is decent taste in music. And Eidos Montreal seems keen to make that a key part of this game. There's a huddle mechanic that we get a little glimpse of in the gameplay reveal, where Star-Lord inspires the group with an 80s soundtrack on his Walkman to get everyone motivated and working together at key climactic moments. Music also works its way into the game's quieter moments. There's a jukebox sitting in the corner of the Milano where the Guardians and the player can just chill out and relax while listening to some songs. Eidos Montreal has apparently licensed 30 classic 80s tracks, including entries from Iron Maiden, Kiss, New Kids on the Block, Joan Jett and Rick Astley. <sighs> We're definitely going to get Rick rolled at some point, aren't we? Well, Rocket's definitely scarier on the inside. Thanks for the bridge, Rocket. If you even think of pulling that Wait, shot again. One of the issues that players never quite got over when it came to the Marvel's Avengers game was the fact that the characters all looked like a slightly off brand version of their MCU counterpart. It's a somewhat fair criticism depending on how you look at it. These games can't and won't look like their movie counterparts. They're just in development for far too long, and it would just be far too expensive. But then again, the movies are the only reason a lot of people will be invested in these characters in the first place. Not everyone has read the comics. So how do you fix that problem? Marvel's Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales weren't subject to the same issues, but that's probably because they didn't try to make their lead characters look kind of like the movie characters, but not. They went with their own interpretations, and that's probably the key here. One of the great things about making a game as opposed to a live-action film is that you're less constricted by what looks real and what doesn't. You aren't melding real life and CG effects, and you can fully lean into comic book energy. Think about what Into the Spider-Verse achieved as a film not bound by needing to make things look photorealistic. It was one of the most inventive comic book adaptations ever made. Guardians of the Galaxy is maybe a bit luckier than Avengers in that it's a more fantastical setting to begin with, allowing for more creative scope. And its lead characters are more fantastical too, so you aren't constantly comparing them to the film actors in the back of your mind. Even Peter Quill looks different enough to Chris Pratt that you understand immediately it's a different take on the character. I just hope they introduce lots of different allies and villains too. We've seen Lady Hellbender, Cosmo the Space Dog, and Mantis so far, but there's so much scope for more. Get ready! Ooh. 
Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy could be a really fun adventure. There's tons of source material to draw from in the comics, so long as it has the Infinity Stones to stand on its own two feet. The combat looks like it could get a little bit samey over the course of the game, but that aside, we're liking what we've seen so far, particularly where the team dynamics are concerned. But what do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments as well as who you'd like to see make an appearance. And as always, make sure you're subscribed to Eurogamer to keep up to date with this game and tons more. We publish a new video every day, so there's always something new to enjoy. Thanks for watching. Bye!